Hey. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm putting on my gloves. My little raggedy knit gloves. <laughs> Let me straighten this up a little bit. And I am going to wait a couple of seconds. For those of you who are my normal Thursday night folks, I know you all miss me last week. I hope you enjoyed your holiday because I certainly did. Spent it with my family. Had a lot of fun. Ended up cooking a lot. And I, um, I don't know. I just had such a blessed time with everyone. Um, but... I didn't want too much time to pass before we had another Thursday night broadcast. The Thursday night is for the Fertile Faith Group of Sincere Ministries. That's who's coming to you live, Sincere Ministries. I am Minister Keisha Rand, and we do a broadcast most nights, three or four times a week. Uh, and each each night that we come on is a different focus. Tuesdays is now Hold and Well, and that's for those of you who are trying to um, get your your health and your 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 life together basically so it's it's your mind your body your your spirit all of that and of course Wednesdays is hiding place for those who are recovering from trauma particularly uh, of a sexual nature such as rape or incest Thursdays is fertile faith for those of you who are believing God for children and Fridays is oasis it's the order of anointed surrendered individual servants and that's particularly for those of you who feel called to ministry or you are already serving in ministry and you need that um, that place of oasis and not just to be an oasis. And of course, Saturday mornings, our only morning session, that is the session for Future Wise. We call it the Esther Project because it um, harbors the beauty of aesthetics with the royalty of a queen. All that to prepare you to be the wives that God wants you to be. Now tonight, I have a very um, dear word for you that God has given to me because I know that sometimes um, you can feel less than less than what you ought to feel when it comes to having children. So I'm going to come down on this music and I'm going to um, just just share with you from the word of God because there's really no point in you listening to me because I'm no different or no better than you. I need the word of God for my own life and I share what I've learned freely. I received it and freely I give it. So that's what I'm doing here tonight. The reason why I'm have on a hat and gloves is because I've been sitting at this computer for hours and I didn't realize how cold I was. So I cut the heat on. And hopefully it won't kick on really loud at the wrong time. But <laughs> this 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 winter time is just taking me by surprise. I'm I'm not ready for it yet. But let me pray for you, okay? Father, thank you. I thank you that you have allowed us to know you and to know your your plan. We read the words that you have given to us and we take it to heart, Lord God. We want to feast on your word. Our souls need that food. Our spirits need that strength. And our bodies will fall in place. Guide us in this word, Lord God. You wrote it. You directed uh, the leaders that you chose to pen it. And we're asking you to bring understanding of it in this present day and time. Because we live here and now. And I know the psalmist was... I understand him so clearly when he said, I would have fainted, I would have given up if I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So we want to see your goodness while we are here. So Lord, I pray that each of these individuals who tune in tonight and who listen to the replay will take advantage of the fact that you want to bless us now and not just in the hereafter. So we're open to you. And we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Fertile Faith Group, the word of the Lord for, to you, for you tonight is be fresh and flourishing. Why not? That phrase I picked up from a scripture that God showed me in Psalm 90, 92. And 
I'm not going to read the entire part right now, but I want to read to you verses 13, 14, and 15, okay? It says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish, flourish in the courts of our God. It's amazing how we just assume that things are just going to happen automatically. But there's something key here, the word planted. That means something that stays, something that is um, permanent. There's a certain understanding that this is something that's stable. It's not something that's moving around. And I don't want anyone to ever think that all you have to do to get what you want from God is just say a few special magic words and poof, there it is. No, there's some stability that comes on our part. No one plants a tree in a river. There's too much movement. There's too much going on around it. You can plant a tree by a river, but not in the river. It's not stable there. It can't grow there. It won't be able to function there and be all that it's supposed to be. We, let's take that analogy in the same way and say that we like those trees. You can't plant yourself in all the crazy things that are going on in your day-to-day -day life and never ever plant yourself in something solid. If you keep trying to do only what everyone else is doing, you'll get swept away. Too many problems, too much heartache, too much issues that, that come up. There's things that just can throw you for a loop. You can lose your job. You can have a broken heart. You can end up having to move and relocate. All these things are great stresses that put so much on you. But what you need to do is plant yourself and say, okay, God, no matter what happens in my life, I want to know that you are the one thing that doesn't move. You are the one constant in my life. So to be planted in the house of the Lord means that I'm going to be in his house, in his word, in what encompasses and shelters and holds in everything that God wants us to be about. That is not something that's necessarily easy to do. But that is the only way you're going to grow. You have to be planted in what he said. Heaven and earth can pass away. But God's words will never pass away. So if you plant yourself in what he said to you concerning the children you believe in God for. And I know of, of women and men, couples who are in their 50s, 40s, 30s, and even 20s and younger. Who have been told by doctors that they'll never have children. They've been told that for some reason or other it's unlikely to happen won't happen or be very, very difficult to happen or you shouldn't have children because of some uh, pre-existing condition. But I want to go by what God says and be planted in that because it's real easy to be planted in what someone says to you that is negative. That if the doctor says you'll never have children, you just kind of prepare yourself to not have children. And so since the doctor said it, then, I mean, he's an expert or she's an expert, she studied, she's prepared, she's looked at all the signs, she studied all my symptoms, she's examined, and I guess that means we're not going to have kids. And when you allow yourself to be planted in that, that type of information is just like that river we talked about a second ago. It's moving, it's changing. The doctor will change his mind. The doctor will say, I was wrong. The doctor is a practicing physician. He's a good guy. We need doctors to a certain extent, but he does not map out your life. He does not have the final say in everything that's going to go on in your life. So in order for you to flourish, to blossom, to expand, to produce, in order for you to, 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 to be more than what you were, to be fruitful and multiply, so to speak, to do everything that God put you on this earth to do, you have to be planted in what is solid, and that is God's word. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. I want to flourish. I don't want to be someone who is barely making it, barely surviving, merely existing, trying to make it through the day. But every day is hard. Every day is a struggle and the struggle is real. I'm going up the mountain and all of this. Your life does not have to be that hard. It does not. There is such a comfort in knowing that we have a God who knows what he's doing and who can do anything. There's nothing impossible for God. 
nothing too hard for him. And there's nothing that he doesn't want to do for us. Nothing. When we get that understanding and we can keep, we can bank on that, we can plant ourselves in that, that we're not dealing with a, some God that someone imagined and we're hoping that what they said is true. God gives evidence of who he is all around us. We see the trees flourishing. We see the flowers flourishing. We see the animals flourishing. They're multiplying. They're growing. They're, they're doing everything that we're supposed to be doing. So why is it that when we find ourselves in a situation where we've been told that we cannot have children or we may not have children, it's unlikely, we try to plant ourselves in that and prepare ourselves to just take it. Don't give up so easily. Don't, don't let that be how you map your life. I've met couples over the years and when you know you ask them about children, do you have kids? that kind of thing and they say well God didn't give us any well I guess it wasn't for us God didn't plan for us to have children so again there's nothing too hard for God there's nothing impossible for God and there's nothing that God does not want to do for you and it's more than just faith faith without works is dead we've been talking about this for a while now and I'm hoping that you really understand this at this point. You cannot just believe, just pray that God gives you children and you do nothing to facilitate it other than sleeping with your spouse. That is not enough. There are avenues that you can take. There are um, ways that you need to adjust, make adjustments. There are things that you need to stop doing. If your body is not functioning correctly, then you need to find out where the disconnect is so that it can function as it should. Your body was created by God to heal itself. So if your body is not in a mode of healing, what foods are you eating? What supplements are you taking? Are they real, made from plants, or are they made from rocks or synthetics? You need to ask the kind of questions that, that make a difference and, and cause your faith to be such that you are actively, actively pursuing what you believe in God for. You're not just saying you believe. And you're not just hoping that what you believe will happen. But you are actively doing something. As the apostle said, you can't say to someone who is freezing and hungry, Well, God bless you, be warm and be filled. That's not enough. There has to be action to your faith. So when I'm sharing these things with you, Giving these tips with you with each of these broadcasts that we do. And we only do one or two a month on Thursday nights. We don't do them every week. But a couple of times a month we do a broadcast with Fertile Faith. Give you a chance to just think about everything that, that, that we're learning at this time. Where we've been talking about so many things that you can do. So many things you can do naturally at home. Things that the Holy Spirit will direct you in if you ask Him. He may tell you you need to decrease the salt in your diet or the sugar or increase your exercise. And you may think, I've done all those things. Listen, there's always, always a way in God. Always. It's a matter of humility. I want to read you the next part of this verse. Verse 14 says, they shall still bear fruit in old age. Still talking about you being a tree. They shall, they shall still bear bear fruit in old age. That means even when, the, when you're, you're past 35, 45, 55, 65, according to what this scripture says that God spoke, he said your age has nothing to do with you being able to bear fruit, to bear children, to have children, not just conceive, not just conceive, but to bear, to carry, to hold on to because it's not enough just for you to conceive and be pregnant for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and then the pregnancy is lost. You need to know that God has promised you here that you will bear fruit even in your old age. Even when the doctors tell you you're too old. Even when the scientists say you're past your prime. Even when everyone else out there in the flow, that flowing river that's passing and going and coming around you. Even when they say that it's not going to happen. You still have the word of God to plant yourself in and say, you know what? I am going to be flourishing and I'm going to be fresh 
That's what this says. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. They shall be. So you will be. So you are. I shall be fresh and flourishing. Therefore, I will be fresh and flourishing. Therefore, I am fresh and flourishing. That means I am fresh, not stale, not spoiled, not old, not ruined, not disposable, not ended, not dead. As long as you are breathing... As long as you are still here, everything is possible. As long as you are still here and you still trust in God, it's possible. I don't need to mention Sarah to you. I don't need to mention all the others to you at this point. You know their stories, but they are not here. You are. You need to learn about the God of right now, not just the God of back then, the God of, you know, ancient days. You need to know of the God of right now in this moment. And you need to learn how to open your mouth and say, Lord, as hard as this is for me to believe, I'm going to hope against hope, as we say, and ask you to show me what I need to do differently to activate my faith, to put steps towards believing what you told me. And I don't mean going out there and buying a baby crib. I don't mean buying baby clothes. I mean actually actively doing what is necessary to prepare your body, your soul, your spirit for a child. It's a matter of preparing for all the things that you don't have to do. Learning about immunizations and vaccines and the harm that they can do to children, to babies, if taken too soon or too close together. Learning about the types of, of, of food that can harm children, that cause allergic reactions, and what can be done differently. Learning about things like probiotics to build your body up till your, so that your body is biotic, not antibiotic. Biotic. So you take probiotics to do the very opposite of antibiotics. Antibiotics kill everything. Probiotics help to build. So that's the best way I can describe what they do. But there are things going on in your body that you do not understand. And you would have to go through a number, dozens and dozens of tests for a doctor to, to just get an idea of what's going on in your unique body. Because each body is different based on all the things that your body has gone through over the years. This includes accidents that you've been in, injuries that you've had, medicines that you've taken over the years, illnesses that you endured and survived, so many different types of stresses, all sorts of pain in your soul, broken heart. All these things contribute to how your unique body chemistry is actually functioning. And for a doctor just to say you can't have kids based on this. You have tumors, you have cysts, you have polyps, you have blockages. All these things, believe it or not, can be remedied naturally without chemicals, without evasive surgery and procedures. It's been done over and over. People around the world have been doing these things long before doctors knew how to pick up a scalpel. But to activate that type of faith, you have to trust that God is on your side and he's with you. You have to be fresh. All of that, that well, I guess it's over for me. That's old. I guess I'm too, I, I'm, I'm, I'm past my prime. That's old information. Something that the doctor told you 10 years ago, oh, you'll never have children because of this. That's old information. You need to be fresh, not old. That's old information that you're holding on to. You need to hold on to what God is saying, which is always fresh, always new. Never, ever will it ever run out of its power. Hold on to that. I know one of my dearest friends I grew up with in, in, in high school told us when we were kids, the doctor had told her she would never have children. And she was the first one in our group who did. <laughs> hmm. Amazing, huh? Because that doctor was basing his information on a couple of tests he took at that moment. He doesn't know the whole of you, your body, your changes, your physiological changes, what you've been through or what you will go through, and what types of things will be released, changed, stopped, relieved, what you'll be delivered from, what things will be healed. He doesn't know about all that. He doesn't know the possibility of that. He had to study you in a bubble every day for years. But God... In his infinite wisdom, because he is the only wise God, he can tell you exactly what you need to modify, what you need to adjust, what you need to change, what you need to back off from, and what you need to do to make yourself ready, ready mentally, learning 
your body clock, learning uh, how to build up your stamina, learning how to get your body to a place where it is nutrient dense, where everything you're eating is filled with nutrients, vitamins, minerals, where your body is ready to pass on those nutrients to those children that you will carry. Because if you don't, you'll end up having very weak, hard pregnancies. You'll end up having these uh, even chemical pregnancies. You'll end up having stillbirths and all these horrible, horrible miscarriages. And it, it'll make you not want to ever go through that again. But what you need to do is stop and say, Lord, this is a new day. I want to be fresh. I want to flourish. I want to go forward with a brand new perspective of what my life is supposed to be right now. And right now, I don't need anything old. No old information. No old ways of doing things. No old practices. Even if I did this before, tell me again what I need to do today. You may think that you've done it all. But guess what? You've eaten before. That doesn't mean you're going to stop eating. Never give up. Never stop doing what is good. It's good for you to keep eating. It's good for you to keep going. It's good for you to keep believing. It's good for you to keep fasting. Keep holding on. Just make sure you are not just doing that only. Activate your faith, Lord. I know that I'm going to bear children. So tell me what to do to prepare for that. The last part of this passage that we're reading in Psalm 92, in verse 15 it says, To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there's no unrighteousness in him. There's a reason for all of this. A reason that it's been such a weight for you to have children. It's been such a, in some instances, a struggle. It's been so hard. It is hard to want children so bad to see other people with children. To see I'm so sorry. That's my husband calling. <laughs> this is probably going to delay the video, but... Here's the thing that you have to understand. There's a re the reason that you're going through all this, because your testimony is going to help so many other people. And that is just one of the greatest opportunities that you can ever have. That you'll actually be able to help somebody else believe God because they see that you did. You're going to be able to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Because people are wondering in the back of their minds, how come you, who has believed God all day, served the Lord, you've been um, doing the right thing, you've been faithfully um, helping others, serving in ministry and church and everything that you're doing, and living a righteous life, and for you to not be blessed with the thing that God promised to all of us, seems like there's something wrong with God. But there is no unrighteousness in Him. There is no unrighteousness in Him. And you will be able to declare that. Even in your 40s, even in your 50s, even in your 60s and beyond, you'll be able to say, God knows what he's doing. Wait for this moment. I waited for this time just because God wants to show you his power and his might. Because if I had been pregnant in, in, when I was a teenager or if I, when I was 20 or when I first got married, no one would have blinked. They, wouldn't, they would not have thought about God at that moment. But when you have a child and you are of age, or as the Bible says here, old age, and you are bearing fruit all the way to term, healthy, strong, and, 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 and doing well, that makes them think about God. That makes them think, my goodness, if God can do this for her and for him, God can do this for us. This makes them want to believe God. This wants them want to keep, it makes them want to keep going and not to give up. If they only think, if they only see 20 year olds having babies easily, then they'll think this is something for young people. It's just, it's just what so many doctors and scientists have surmised. But that is not the reality for believers. That is not the essential truth for those who believe God. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we live this thing. And no matter what your faith is about, whether it's about children or about finances or about health, whatever you believe in God for, the fact that you believe in God is showing that you are still going on in the faith. So keep the faith. Hold on to the faith. Do what you need to do. Because at the end of all of this, you don't want to come to the end of your days and meet the Lord. And he says, you didn't do anything to activate your faith. You thought, you said words, 
but you did nothing else. It's the same as if I say, wow, I really want a great garden. Lord, please give me a garden. I'm hoping, God, for a great garden outside. But I never step out the door and plant one seed. I never prune anything. I never water. I never fertilize. I just kind of let it grow into a jungle out there. And the weeds just kind of take over. There are things that you can and must do to facilitate what you're believing God for. Because Ultimately, you can't cause yourself to conceive. No one can. God determines that. But you have to prepare yourself for it. If I know I'm expecting guests, I'm going to prepare for them. Because I want them to enjoy a nice meal. I want them to have something to drink. I want them to be able to be comfortable when they come in. Be prepared for your children. You believe in God for children? Prepare. Prepare. Don't waste your time wondering when. You prepare for them as if they come they are coming now. You get ready. I don't mean just get the nursery ready. I mean the decisions, the directions, the charges that God wants you to, to, to operate under. What is the charge? What is the command? What is the order? What is the destiny for this child? And how am I supposed to direct them? Do I need to take a couple of classes? Is this child going to be a, a great math whiz? Do I need to be able to find out the, the, the great math mentors and tutors? What do I need to know about this child? So that I am not trying to make this child just survive life. I want them to thrive in life and be everything that God created this child to be. That takes preparation. And that is where you are. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Don't go month to month and look at your calendar and go, still not pregnant, still, no, you still got time. Be grateful. You still have time to make your pre preparations sound and to get everything in order. And in the appointed time, when all is ready, in the fullness of time and everything is in order, those children will come and you will be ready. And you will be able to declare to others, this is God. And God has done his thing. And you will be able to show them, there's nothing unrighteous about God. God did not deny me. God did not lie to me. God did not hurt me. God did not break me. God did not disappoint me. God did not leave me here brokenhearted. You get ready. You get prepared. Quit wasting time mad because you didn't get what you wanted when you wanted it. And thank God that you have at least a couple more days weeks or months to get ready for that blessing don't let that blessing come and you're not ready that's what makes it hard and we don't have time for that okay so that's our time for tonight be fresh be flourishing and might i add be ready in jesus name you guys keep up with me here on periscope eight o'clock most nights um different group go to our website sincere ministries.org for more information on all of our programs and to support the work that we do, we need your prayers. We need your support. We need you to bless us. Last month, we celebrated 30, 27 years. We've been doing this for a little while, and we've seen God do amazing things. So thank you so much. You guys have a fantastic night. If you have any questions or comments, please send an email to be sincere at sincereministries.org. You guys have a fantastic and blessed night. God is with you and don't you forget it. See you now.